If you follow me on TikTok, you know that a couple weeks ago, I posted a video, Never Have I Ever, Lawyer Edition. If you don't follow me on TikTok, I'm not mad. But why am I yelling? Today what I thought I'd do is expand on the answers I gave by just putting my fingers down. Cause that doesn't really explain much. Now let's just jump right into the video. Never have I ever defended a client who pled innocent, but he was actually guilty. Okay, of course I've defended people who are guilty, but they've pled themselves innocent at the beginning. And I'll tell you why. In the United States, you have a right to be presumed innocent until you are proven guilty. And you all know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Lawyers don't take cases in criminal court because they believe that all their clients are innocent. They take cases because in our system, people who are charged with a crime have a right to a defense. You have a right to be presumed innocent and you have a right to compel the state to actually prove its case. Like there's three elements to a crime. You have a right to make this state prove all three elements of the crime. And that's why the lawyers are there. Not necessarily get someone off who actually did it, but to make sure that the evidence that the state says that they have they actually have it. So if you're not familiar with this aspect of the criminal justice system, it might seem strange to you. But for lawyers, we know that people have been accused of crimes. They need lawyers, whether they are guilty or not. Never have I ever been asked by someone in the courtroom, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> how do you sleep at night? Wow, judge much? <laughs> Okay, so here's the deal. When you hire me, you're like, oh, Josh is my lawyer, he's gonna fight for me. Of course I am. But the party on the other side, the lawyer on the other side, they're getting hired just the same way. Like we come into a case and a good lawyer can actually, and I know you don't wanna hear this. I know you don't wanna hear this, but a good lawyer can be hired to represent either side of a case because we are hired guns. I'm not your uncle. If your wife is divorcing you, I don't care if she wins or loses. But as soon as you hire a lawyer, our job is to fight for you. How do I sleep at night? Come on! I'm a hired gun. Every single lawyer who goes into a courtroom is a hired gun. Now, does that mean we don't care about our client's case? It means the opposite. But we have to be there to do a job. We're hired to do the job. So. The way that I sleep at night is the same way that your lawyer sleeps at night. You might think that you have some righteous cause and your lawyer believes in you and that's great, but I'm telling you, on the other side of the courtroom, there's someone who also believes that they have a righteous cause. Their lawyer is as fully committed to their case as you are to yours. And so when grandma comes down after a custody trial, it's like, how can you represent you? you, you? Yeah, I'm like, you know what? Shut up, grandma! I'm doing my job! and your, your kid's lawyer's doing their job. It doesn't mean that either one of us is right or wrong. Our job is to fight. Oh, you're getting me worked up because the lawyer's job is to get worked up. It's to advocate. It's to make sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted and that each side has a zealous advocate. I'm doing zealous advocacy right now for the rights of lawyers to represent people who actually aren't that great. But I mean, all my clients are great. So here's what happens. We have this contested, angry hearing, and let's say it's a custody case, and you got one family on one side and one on the other. Somebody in the other side of the courtroom is gonna come up to me afterwards, or actually, and this has happened on a break, and they're like, how can you sleep at night? I'll tell you how I sleep at night. So listen, real talk. Sometimes when cases go to trial, it's because they have warts on them. What is a wart? What does a lawyer mean when he tells his client, your case has some warts? My clients often believe that when we get into the courtroom, if we could just get in there and say our piece, we will win. Oh, you know who else believes that? <laughs> the people on the other side of the courtroom. You don't know what's gonna happen in a trial. I'm telling you, the outcomes are, they're up in the air. The most really painful, one of the most painful outcomes I ever had along these lines was in the middle of a trial. We thought we were winning and the insurance adjuster came up to us in the middle of the trial and said, I wanna do a high-low with you. Now, if you don't know what a high-low is, a high-low is where the insurance adjuster says, well, we'll pay $100,000 if you guys get a zero verdict. And we won't pay any more than $400,000 even if you guys get a $2 million verdict. And we were like, dude, we're winning. The jury's gonna award us a million dollars. We don't want your high-low. We rejected the high-low and the jury gave us 
zero. Had we taken the high-low, we would have gotten the bottom number of their bracket. Now, I gave you an example number of brackets. I'm not gonna tell you how much money our client actually lost out on, but she did not want us to take the money, and so we didn't take it. It would have been nice if we had taken it. Whew, hopefully this next question won't bring back such painful memories. Never have I ever regretted putting a client on the witness stand. Oh, God. Most of the time, I do not regret putting my client on the witness stand. First of all, trials are really important. They are an opportunity for the litigants to explain what happened. But sometimes it is possible for a client to become, how can I say this? so committed to their own version of what happened that they are not aware of how it might appear to someone else that it did not happen that way. And so I've seen situations in which my clients have given a version of a story which I'm not sure how to say this, all of the evidence disagreed with. And therefore, the jury was left to conclude that my client was maybe not telling the truth. Never have I ever made up words while arguing in court. I'm not putting my finger down for that. I've never made up words while arguing in court. Now, I have gotten worked up, I pounded the table! And I guarantee you there's been like spittle and whatever else. And I've misspoken, but I've never made up words. I, I'm a lawyer, I already know like a hundred words. I might even know 200 words. I don't need to make up words. I just need to turn the table and say something real wordish, likely. Never have I ever asked a client to stop talking. You have to be really delicate when you have a client who's going on and on and on and you need them to stop talking. Now, when I shot this video, I assumed that we were talking about something that happened in court, not on the phone, not in a meeting in my office, but actually in the courtroom because I have I've had to do that in the courtroom and that's why I put my finger down. So the deal is when you ask someone a yes or no question and you're hoping to get like a yes or no answer, but then they just start pontificating, that's not always helpful. When a lawyer asks a witness a question, we typically have like, it's a paint by numbers, right? We're trying to get this fact in, then this fact in, and then this fact, and yada da 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 da. And we need them in order and we need them to make sense. Now, I get a client up there. Sometimes the client is not comfortable. They're not ready to trust that the lawyer is gonna cover everything. So you ask them one question and they're like, aha, now is my time to start my lecture. Please don't do that. What a lawyer needs in the courtroom is just to answer the question that's been asked and not to just go on because we will get to the important stuff unless you hired a dumb lawyer, which believe me, there's plenty of them out there. There's none of them in this video, I don't think. No, I checked. <laughs> We're all good. Your lawyer's gonna get you the information that you need eventually, but you gotta do it in bite-sized pieces, not all at once. Never have I ever been hit by a client during a court proceeding. I did not put my finger down because I've never been hit by a client. Now, in full disclosure, I have been nudged like, ah, ah. I'm trying to pay attention to what's happening, but I've definitely been nudged by a client. And also the other thing that uh, people like to do in the courtroom is, I got a pen. They're like, you know, you're listening to the witness, they're talking, and then my client's like, <laughs> Scrubble, 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 and then shove it in front of my face. And I'm like, yeah, what? Just, I'll get to that, okay? I'll get to that. No, 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 I need you, I need you to see it, I need you to see it. Well, I'm actually trying to pay attention. And you know what's often written? Something like, that's not what happened. Well, duh. Never have I ever gone to drinks with opposing counsel. Okay, of course I've gone to drinks with opposing counsel. Now, I don't want you guys to think that the court system is completely demystified by what I'm saying. Because as a lawyer, I make money if there's some level of mystification, right? Like if you don't know exactly what's going on, you might be inclined to pay your lawyer more money. But look, I got to let you know exactly what's going on. Most cases do not go to trial. They settle. How do they settle? They settle through communication. Well, what helps people communicate better than alcohol? I'm not sure that that is the rhetorical question that I think it is. However, lawyers often will go out and have dinner or drinks with each other and talk about a case. I have resolved a case for, we're gonna bleep it out, but it was And the conversation to settle it happened 
at a bar in New Orleans. It was a great outcome for my clients. Opposing counsel paid for drinks, so shout out to him. You want your lawyer talking with the lawyer for the other side because talking helps us get deals done and most cases are resolved by talking. Handshaking. I can't really. Uh, handshakes. Never have ever gone drinking with a client after a trial. Okay. No, I did not put a finger down. I've never gone drinking with a client after a trial. I don't know why. We've won some pretty big cases. I feel like we could celebrate, but normally like they're off celebrating with their family and friends and I'm celebrating with the people that I work with and it's never really worked out for us to celebrate together. Maybe that will happen someday. It's like not on my bucket list, but maybe it should be, but like it just really hasn't come up. And I think the reason is that as much as I care for my clients and as much as I want them to win, at the end of the day, I'm I'm a hired gun. I'm there to do a job and I'm gonna do the job, hopefully, that changes my client's life. Never have I ever said objection during a regular conversation. Now I didn't put my finger down for this because I'm a lawyer, not an idiot. No one wants to have someone say objection to them in a conversation. Now, my kids may tell you I'm lying. My kids may tell you I, do, I say it, but I mean, mostly what I'm doing to my kids is saying, stop it, stop. Stop it. Trying to use like a force. And finally, never have I ever asked too many questions of a witness. Okay, so here is the thing, and every single lawyer, if you're a lawyer and you're watching this, you know that what I'm saying is true. And if you're not a lawyer, well, every lawyer's made this mistake. You get a witness up there, and they're great. They're doing such a great job. I mean, you're just like, Aah! yes, mm, you love it. And you're asking them questions, and it's going, and they're going to everything's good and you've gotten everything you need from them and then you ask them one question too many and either they weren't prepared for it or they start focusing on something else but there's two things actually there might be three things that go wrong there number one is you take the focus off of the great testimony that right there that's bad enough and your lawyer should be slapped for that wait I'm not advocating lawyer abuse well it depends on the lawyer but two, you get your witness in some unfamiliar territory and they did great on the stuff that they were supposed to testify about and now they're like not really sure and it just doesn't sound as good. But number three, you get them to say something that toggles a switch inside the mind of the other attorney and all of a sudden they have uh, come up with a new way to undermine your witness's testimony. And oh, you know when you go too far and it's a sick feeling. I hate it. And it's more prevalent with younger lawyers, which is not me, that you ask your good witness too many questions. What you need to do is uh, get everybody off the stand just as quickly as possible. Well, that was interesting, I hope. Are you subscribed to the channel? Subscribe to the channel. Come on, there's content all the time up in here. No, but actually, like hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button. I will be back soon, we'll see you then.